Today's lesson is on the properties of parallelograms. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and the scale and find where you are before we begin the lesson. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So here, notice this side AB is parallel to side DC and side AD is parallel to side BC. Parallelograms have special properties regarding their sides, angles, and diagonals. In a quadrilateral, opposite sides do not share a vertex and opposite angles do not share a side. So if you notice, side AB and side CD are opposite sides, and side BC and side DA are opposite sides. Angle A and angle C are opposite angles, and angle B and angle D are opposite angles. Our first theorem for this lesson is Theorem 6-3. It states that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So, since quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, then side AB is congruent to side CD, and side BC is congruent to side DA. Take a minute to look over the proof of Theorem 6-3. If you have any questions on it, ask me tomorrow in class. The angles of a polygon that share a side are called consecutive angles. Notice angle A and angle B share side AB. These angles are consecutive angles. There are four pairs of consecutive angles in every parallelogram. Theorem 6-4 uses the fact that consecutive angles of a parallelogram are actually same side interior angles between parallel lines. So if you notice, side AD is parallel to side BC, and side AB acts as the transversal. So angle A and angle B are same side interior angles. Remember, same side interior angles are supplementary. So in theorem 6-4, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, like parallelogram ABCD, then the consecutive angles are supplementary. So the sum of angle A and B is 180, the sum of angle B and angle C is 180, the sum of angle C and angle D is 180, and the sum of angle D and angle A is 180. In example one, we will be using consecutive angles. What is the measure of angle P in parallelogram PQRS? Since the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, we know the consecutive angles are supplementary. That means the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle S will equal 180. We'll substitute 64 degrees in for the measure of angle S, then use the subtraction property of equality, and the measure of angle P equals 116. Now pause the video and do you try number one. Suppose we adjust the lamp so that the measure of angle S is 86 degrees. What is the measure of angle R in parallelogram PQRS? Again, since we have a quadrilateral that is a parallelogram, the consecutive angles will be supplementary. So the measure of angle S plus the measure of angle R will equal 180. Now let's substitute 86 in for the measure of angle S. Now let's subtract 86 from both sides and the measure of angle R is 94. In theorem 6-5, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Since quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D. In example 2, we will use the properties of a parallelogram to prove that angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D. Let's start by writing the given that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. We know that angles that share a side in a parallelogram are consecutive angles, so angle A and angle B are consecutive angles by definition. We also know by definition that angle B and angle C are consecutive angles, and by definition angle C and angle D are consecutive angles. Since consecutive angles are supplementary, angle A and angle B are supplementary, angle B and angle C are supplementary, and angle C and angle D are supplementary. Since angle A and angle C 
are both supplementary to angle B, angle A is congruent to angle C. Since angle B and angle D are both supplementary to angle C, angle B is congruent to angle D. Pause the video and do you try number two. Here we want to prove that angle BCD is congruent to angle CMD. Let's start with the given that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. Since opposite angles of parallelograms are congruent, we know that angle A and angle BCD are congruent. Now let's use our second given that segment AK is congruent to segment MK. Since segment AK and MK are congruent, that means triangle AKM is an isosceles triangle, which means angle A and angle M are congruent. Since angle A is congruent to angle BCD, and angle A is congruent to angle CMD, that means by the transitive property of congruence, angle BCD is congruent to angle CMD. In a parallelogram, the diagonals have a special property as well. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. Since quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram, then segment AE is congruent to segment CE, and segment BE is congruent to segment DE. In example 3, we will use algebra to find lengths. Solve a system of linear equations to find the values of x and y in parallelogram KLMN. What are the lengths of segment KM and the length of segment LN? Since KLMN is a parallelogram, we know the diagonals bisect each other. So let's start with the fact that the length of segment LP is equal to the length of segment PN and that the length of segment KP is equal to the length of segment PM. Now we'll substitute x in for the length of segment LP and y plus 2 in for the length of segment PN and y plus 10 in for the length of segment KP and 2x minus 8 in for the length of segment PM. Since we have two variables in each equation, we're going to have to write a or use a system of linear equations. So since x is already by itself, we know that x equals y plus 2. Let's substitute y plus 2 in for x into this equation. We'll use distributive property, 2 times y is 2y, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now, let's combine like terms on the right. Then we can add 4 to both sides and subtract y from both sides. Since y equals 14, we can now substitute the value for y, 14, into this equation. So x equals 14 plus 2, or 16. Once we have the values for x and y, we can substitute them in for the lengths of the diagonals. We know that the length of segment KM is the length of segment KP plus the length of segment PM. Let's substitute 14 in for y and 16 for x. So 14 plus 10 plus 2 times 16 minus 8 is 48. So the length of segment KM is 48. We know the length of segment LN is the length of segment LP plus the length of segment PN. We'll substitute the lengths of segment LP and PN, and then 16 in for X and 14 in for Y. So 16 plus 14 plus 2 is 32. So the length of segment KM is 48, and the length of segment LN is 32. The value for x is 16, and the value for y is 14. Pause the video and do you try number 3. Find the values of x and y in parallelogram PQRS. What are the length of segment PR and the length of segment SQ? Since PQRS is a parallelogram, we know the diagonals bisect each other. So the length of segment PT is equal to the length of segment TR and the length of segment ST equals the length of segment TQ. Let's substitute 3y minus 7 in for PT's length and 2x in for TR's length, and x minus 1 for the length of segment ST and y for the length of segment TQ. Again, we're going to have to use a system of equations. 
Since y is by itself, let's substitute x minus 1 in for y into this equation. We'll use distributive property, 3x minus 3 minus 7 will equal 2x. We'll combine like terms on the left, and 3x minus 10 will equal 2x. Now let's subtract 2x from both sides, and add 10 to both sides, and x equals 10. Now let's substitute the value for x into this equation. Since 10 minus 1 is 9, y will equal 9. Now let's find the length of segment PR by adding the length of segment PT and TR. 3 times 9 minus 7 plus 2 plus times 10 equals 40. So the length of segment PR is 40. To find the length of segment SQ, we will add the length of segment ST and the length of segment TQ. Since 10 plus 1 plus 9 equals 20, the length of segment SQ is 20. We can use parallelograms to prove the following theorem. If three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they will also cut off congruent segments on the other transversal. So, since line AB is parallel to line CD, which is parallel to line EF, and segment AC is congruent to segment CE, then segment BD will be congruent to segment DF. In example 4, we will use parallel lines and transversals. In the figure, line AE is parallel to line BF, which is parallel to line CG, which is parallel to line DH. Also, the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment BC, which is equal to the length of segment CD, which is 2. Since all three of these segments are congruent, we know that all three of these segments will also be congruent. Since the length of segment EF is 2.25, then we know the length of segment FG and the length of segment GH are also 2.25. What is the length of segment EH? Since segment EH consists of three segments that are 2.25 each, the length of segment EH will equal 3 times 2.25, or 6.75. Pause the video and do you try number four. If the length of segment EF, FG, GH are all equal to six, and the length of segment AD is 15, what is the length of segment CD? Since segment EF, FG, and GH are all congruent, we know that segment AB, BC, and CD are all congruent as well. Since the length of segment AD equals 15, and it takes three segments to create segment AD that are all congruent, we know that the length of segment CD will be one-third of 15, or 15 divided by 3. So the length of segment CD is 5. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions or there's anything you don't understand from the lesson check, please make sure you ask me in class. Take a minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we began the lesson.